Howdy again everyone, and today I'm covering another of Nikon zoom lenses for their APS-C digital SLR cameras, the Nikon AFS DX Nikkor 18-105mm f3.5-5.6 G ED VR. It came out in 2008, and it was clearly intended to be a cheaper alternative to the high quality 16 to 85 mm lens Nikon had just bought out for those on a lower budget. It's pretty much discontinued now in favour of a newer 18 to 140 mm lens. Are you following me so far? But this older lens is still of interest, as you can find it quite easily for under £150 or around $150 on eBay, which could make it a fantastic little upgrade to your camera's kit lens, if that's what you're on the market for. And here is the lens's zoom range, compared to an 18-55mm kit lens. We start at the same reasonably wide angle, but the 18-105mm option obviously lets you zoom in about twice as far. While that is not as impressive as, say, an 18-200 or even 300mm super zoom lens, it'll still give you a huge advantage for shooting anything that's a bit further away, and isolating your subject in your picture a bit more. Bear in mind though, that that maximum aperture of only f3.5 at the wide angle end to 5.6 when you zoom in is fairly dark, and so the lens won't enable you to shoot with fast shutter speeds or get particularly out of focus backgrounds in your images. The lens does, however, have one of Nikon's early image stabilisation systems, or VR as they call it. Here's some footage with it turned off, and now turned on. While it doesn't exactly hold your image rock steady, it will still help you quite a lot to get sharper images and smoother video footage when you're out and about shooting. The build quality of this lens is definitely on the cheaper side, but actually it handles reasonably well. It's plasticky and relatively lightweight, Nikon lists the lens's weight as officially being 420 grams. The lens is based on a plastic mount without any weather sealing. Next comes a plastic focus ring. It has a little play to it, and you don't get a focus scale to it, but it does at least turn quite smoothly, and you can safely turn it at any time to change focus. When changing focus, the lens treats you to a lot of breathing, zooming out as you focus more closely. The lens's autofocus motor works internally, quite accurately, and reasonably quickly, making a quiet whooshing and squeaking sound as it goes. Those sounds will be picked up by your camera's microphone though, if you're shooting video. The lens's zoom ring is wide and rubberized, and it turns nice and smoothly, but we do see some zoom creeping at the telephoto end when the lens is held vertically, as you can see here. The lens's filter thread size is 67mm wide, and it comes with a little plastic lens hood. Overall, for the price you're paying, the build quality is fine, although there are lots of little telltale signs that we're working with a low budget option from a few years ago. Well, more important than all of that is this lens's image quality. I'll be testing it out on a Nikon D5600 with its 24 megapixel APS-C sensor. At the widest angle of 18mm and f3.5, sharpness and contrast in the middle of the image are excellent, and I'm glad to say that corner image quality looks reasonably good here too. If you stop down to f5.6, then there's very little improvement, but at f8, contrast looks a tiny bit better there. The lens stays this sharp down to f16, where the effects of diffraction are beginning to soften the image a bit. Good start at the wide angle end there, though. Let's zoom in now halfway to 50mm. The lens's maximum aperture has now darkened to f5. The middle of the image looks quite sharp, but not quite as punchy as it did at wider angles. The corner image quality here is just slightly soft. However, stop down to f8, and those corners sharpen up again noticeably, and the middle of the image sees an edge of extra contrast now. f11 looks about the same in the middle and in the corners, so that's a decently sharp performance in the middle of the zoom range. And finally, let's zoom all the way into 105mm. The maximum aperture is now f5.6, 
The middle of the image looks slightly soft now, but not terribly so. The image corners look even fuzzier. Stop down to F8 or F11 for little improvements in those image corners, with the picture quality looking reasonable there now, and the middle of the image looks just a tiny bit better, but still not perfectly sharp. Overall, considering this lens's low cost and wide zoom range, its image quality isn't bad at all. It's generally sharp in the middle of your images, and if you stop your aperture down to f8, the corners look fairly impressive too, so you can draw a lot of sharpness out of it, even though it's hardly a resolution monster. Ok, well let's look at distortion and vignetting, which can be a bit of a struggle with lenses with a long zoom range. These are images with in-camera corrections turned off. At 18mm, we're dealing with some quite noticeable barrel distortion here, although I have seen worse in a zoom lens. The edges look a bit dark at f3.5 from vignetting. Stop down to f5.6 and f8 to see those corners gradually brighten up a bit. Zoom in to 21mm and that distortion straightens out, well almost, and zoom all the way into 105mm to see some fairly strong pincushion distortion, and again some vignetting at f5.6, which is tamed down at f8 and f11. So it's not a great performance here, the Nikon 16 to 85mm lens I tested recently was far better corrected in those respects. Well, let's take a look at close-up image quality now. This lens can focus as closely as 45cm to your subject. That's really nice and close. Close-up image quality is pretty sharp at f5.6, and stop down to f8 for even a tiny little improvement. Nice. Now let's see how well the lens works against bright lights. It's a frankly awful result here. Loads of flaring, glaring, and a loss of contrast. Well, at least the lens comes with a free hood, which will help a little bit. And finally, bokeh. It's difficult to get out of focus backgrounds with this lens, and when you do, they are a real mixed bag, unpredictably either looking quite busy, or sometimes quite smooth. Overall, well, considering that you can find these lenses for under $150 these days, I think it's a fairly good deal overall. It's pretty sharp, the build quality is ok, it has a useful zoom range and a good close-up shooting ability, it has its share of little niggles and problems, but really, that's all you can ask for at that kind of price. So if you want a little extra zoom range for your Nikon APS-C digital SLR camera for a low price, it has to come recommended.